So I've got two turbo trainers here, some of the best that you can buy. It's the Neo 2T, and I've got the V6 version of the Wahoo Kicker. And um, I've had the chance to ride these back to back, so this is not sponsored or any ways, no conjunction with any of the products. Just want to see um, which one's best. I mean, there's a lot of talk about um, why people would choose different ones. They have both got, some of the stats are very similar. Both got a maximum output 2,200 watts, both claim 1% accuracy. So there are a few differences between the two. The tax here, this is neodymium magnets. Uh, Wahoo uses a flywheel. This comes with a cassette. It's got a sun, sun race cassette included, 11 speed. The tax doesn't come with one. Um, Price-wise, very similar to, I think this is 1,100, 1,200. Um, although you can get certain deals, different software included. This has very small amount of movement in the, um, the feet of it. This doesn't have any movement, but now you can buy motion plates for this. Whereas the Wahoo, if you want any more movement, they've got their own now movement um, system. So it all gets very complicated and the choice between which one you buy is um, probably quite a minefield, especially when you're talking about a lot of money. The, so what I'm going to do is uh, I've got a, a program, so I use Wahoo X for training, um, prefer this to, I used to use Zwift, um, prefer to use Wahoo now, is, for me it's a better training tool. I'm going to do the same session, which is a Sufferfest session called Joyride, I enjoy it, um, if you can say you enjoy it for, for a training session and it's a session which has a lot of changes in resistance so it should allow me to see how each trainer, trainer responds to different uh, responses in the power. Uh, one thing I should say is that also if you're using Swift this has like a um, vibration function that aims to recreate cobbles and things like that. When I did use Swift I found it quite good I wouldn't say it's uh, something that's worth buying a, the 2T just to have that but if you're using Zwift, then maybe it's an option. Whereas the Wahoo, it doesn't have that, but you can add extra things to it. You've got a head fan and you've got a climb. Um, I'm not so sure on the um, how good the uh, head fan is gonna be, but for me, I've got two fans on the setup and I choose to use them on the power depending on my effort rather than whether I'm going uphill or downhill on, on an app. The climb, I would like to use it, but I don't have the headspace where I train to, to add that on. So I'm gonna test them back to back now. And then afterwards, give a little recap and see if I've got a preference. how it's going to affect it. I'm not sure how it's going to affect the difference but one difference is the uh, the Neo screws into the frame, um, into the turbo, whereas the tax I think it's more like a wheel it sits on. So see if that affects the, the movement at all. So the bike I've got here uses X12, um, 142 by 12. The um, it was a bit of a pain with the Neo2 because you have to use different connectors depending on which type of 142 system through actually have. This one it's simpler, the bike just slots on, so that's one plus. Whoa, easy! 
easy. Okay, so going, hey, big fan. Maybe he can get his autograph if you get a chance. Cool. All right, we can make the finish line. All right, get ready. Number one, left hander. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get Uh, so, finished second. Initial impressions, uh, there is a difference. Subtle differences, but I'll, uh, I'm going to go get myself sorted. Uh, go through things in a bit more detail and see, um, see, say which one I think is best. So I've actually decided to do a much longer test uh, on the Wahoo. It was good to do back to back yesterday, but um, I've been using the Neo 2T for a long time, so I want to do a bit of a longer um, ride and and see if there's a a difference that I can feel on a on a longer ride. So I've got a two hour, just over two hour to a session planned. And I think after that I'll have a have a really good idea and be able to compare. So with both now tested properly and an extended test that I managed to do on this uh, Wahoo kicker, um, give an idea of what sort of genuine differences are and where I think each has uh, advantages. First of all, talk about stability. Both are stable units. I think the tax, if you're not strapping them down, the tax is probably slightly more stable. It weighs an absolute ton. Um, and that might be why it's slightly more stable. With the with a kicker, uh, I've needed to strap it down a little bit tighter, but um, it's still, you know, compared to many other turbo trainers, it's still a very stable design. Next up, accuracy. They both claim 1%, although if you take one at the very bottom, one at the very top, it could be um, an, an amount that you would notice. Um, while riding, I, w I did feel like the Wahoo was slightly easier at the set FTP that, that I have on the, on the software. That may in part be because of the way that the power is um, and how smooth the transfers are. So within Wahoo software, you can set power smoothing on, uh, which I have it set on for the tax, and it was initially set up for the Wahoo as well. With the Wahoo, the power transfer seemed to be far more um, softer. Um, with the tax, I think it's due to the, the way that the, um, the magnets work. When you come off an interval or go on to an interval, even with power smoothing on, there's like a... Um, coming off in particular, you, you finish an interval and it's like bang, the uh, power comes off and it's, and it's easier. With the Wahoo, it was smoother. Now that might appeal to some people. For me, doing intervals, I like it where that interval stops and it's like instantly you can pedal smoother. So that, um, that for me is a, something I liked on this. But it's not dramatically different when you were going from um, say 100 watts up to 400 watts. It took about one second per 100 watts within the kicker to for this power to come in. And that's just because of the way that the smoothing works. It could be for really high, high effort. Um, if you're doing like neuromuscular uh, standing starts, that could be an issue. But for general training and riding, I don't think it's gonna be causing any problems. And especially for people who use Zwift and, and elements like that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be a factor. Both the units, both the trainers, I did feel a small amount of vibration through. The tax I've always had it and noticed similar on the Wahoo. Uh, neither have it to an extent that it affects it too much and it's not built into the bike because it does feel slightly different. With the, with the tax it happens when you come off an interval onto a lower power and with the Wahoo it was more constant but less noticeable and um, 
yeah, neither to an extent that I, I think it would cause any problems. The bike, as far as I'm aware, is all fine. Um, it may be due to the way that the axle is connected and the slight difference, whereas within this, it's connected directly into the unit and this one, you it's effectively like having a wheel, um, put it onto a wheel. So maybe that is why there's a slight amount more vibration on this unit. Other advantages, Wahoo, you can connect other things to it. So you can have Wahoo Climb, you can have the fan if you wanted to have the fan and you can get a specific table for it as well to really sort of create a, an ecosystem for the unit. Um, I like say I would like to try the climb, but I can't do within this unit, within the setup that I've got here. Um, that could be uh, potentially an advantage. Connectivity as well. This has, I think it's Bluetooth and, and wireless. That could be, um, could help some for connectivity. For the tax, one difference, so I had a Neo 2 before, not the 2T. That when uh, I think the the setup the the speed difference in the connectivity was was slower. On some intervals, it would take a few seconds to to come off. With this, it's like instant. So that's one big advantage for the two T over the over the two. Um, and then this, I didn't have any issues. I don't have any issues with the tax either. But for some people, it might be that extra connectivity helps for that. Overall. Um, Choosing between the two is very, very difficult. It might come down to cost. I mean, you've got a couple of hundred pound difference. You get a cassette on this, which which will help. Uh, for me, I've got this connected up now. I've got no reason to take it off and to go back to this. It might be for, for some, you know, that's enough to, the, the price difference is enough to, to go with a kicker. So I know it's, a, <laughs> in a way, this is what many other people have said, and there's no difference uh, or the, the similar performance. But I think in trueness, that's, that's what it is. They're both very, very good units. They do feel slightly different, but the, the power and the, the way that they, they can both give an accurate reading is, is both very good. Um, so either if you've got one, there's no point in changing to the other. And if you're looking at, at getting a smart trainer, I would simply go to whatever gives you the best value. So hopefully this has been of some use. Good luck to everyone um, who's going to be using smart trainers to, to get some fitness now and to do some riding. Um, well, I guess not just over winter, but anytime.